This is the electric skateboard. It's a portable electric skateboard that helps you get around. And with its big wheels, it can handle tougher ground. With its LED lights, powered by an Arduino, we're able to provide better indication for nearby motorists. Here's an example of me turning right. But that's not all. It's... It's fast. Well, we're gonna find out how fast this DIY board really is, take into account its range and its weight. This is my personal record. The RGB lights can also be customized to any color hue using Arduino powered LEDs. And with this remote, you can provide acceleration or brake. It also features a physical key to start your own board, paired with its own battery status to tell you your own charge. And with this flex design, it helps with stability, giving you a more smoother ride. Well, that's enough from me. In this video, we're gonna find out how to build an electric skateboard, and more importantly, how does a DIY electric skateboard compare with an actual commercial board? Let's go somewhere a bit more comfortable. Take me away. But wait, how did we even get here in the first place? Well, let's take this a few months back. London, home to millions. A good amount of people commute around London on a daily basis, but with recent events and with public transport, people are thinking of different ways to get around. My plan was to buy an electric skateboard but looking at the prices, I started thinking, what about if we make an electric skateboard? I mean, I've already built one that sort of works. What about if we beef it up and make it as practical as one you can buy for cheaper? Well, let's find out. So after a bit of procrastination and development, here it is. The top half is normal, it's the bottom half we'll focus on. This consists of the motor and pulley, the battery, and the LED lights. The motor and pulley. The motor is attached to a mount where a belt rotates the wheel using a pulley system. Here's the timing belt and here's the larger gear on the wheel, the battery and electronics. Now all electronics are housed in the enclosure and using a loop key to complete the circuit we turn on the board. The receiver is now on, we can use the remote to provide acceleration and brake. The programmable LEDs include a front light and back light, all powered by an Arduino Nano. But if that's not your thing, you can go for the RGB effect and travel in style, like literally. Right, before we start, if you like this type of content, Help us beat the YouTube algorithm by smashing the like button. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Also, turn post notifications on while I try and figure out some type of post schedule. We've got loads of more interesting projects on the way. Isn't that right, Al? Why not leave a comment? I reply to every comment. Safety is important when making an electric skateboard, from dealing with batteries to wearing a helmet. It's also good to know the motor laws in your country. Um, ironically, this video is probably more relevant outside the UK, well at least for now. Oh, and one more thing, if you watch to the end, you'll find out how this board compares with the commercial board like the boosted board. Let's get to building. The Overview The Part List Now, the very first part we'll need is the long board. We're using a 36 inch version in our case, with the pulley and motor attached. We'll be using the flip sky motor and some gears and timing belts. We'll also need an enclosure to house the electronics. Two LiPo batteries, each with an output of 18.5 volts. 
some series connectors. A VESC, which is a programmable electronic speed controller. We'll talk more about this. A loop key. A remote. An Arduino Nano. And some LED strips. Links to the parts are in the description below. Assembly of parts. Here are the bare bones of the electric skateboard. But the question is, how do we go from this to that? Well, firstly, we'll need two LiPo batteries, both in series. This will give us a combined voltage of 37 volts, and this will be connected to a VESC. Now, the VESC is the brains of the board, and it's an open source programmable electronic speed controller, which regulates the output of the motor. This was pioneered by a person called Ben Vader. We also have the motor and pulley attached to the trucks of the board. And lastly, a loop key to complete the circuit. This turns on the receiver so we can control the speed using the remote. You can find more details about this project on our site, Smart Builds, as well as downloading the Arduino Lights code. This can be found in the description below. And now we're weighing in the board. This comes at three and a half kilos. Now, there were a few modifications made to the board. Firstly, it was spray painted matte black. Also, some LEDs were put around the sides of the board using a hot glue gun to keep it in place. and riser pads were also added to give the board a good lift. Some holes were also drilled for the enclosure. Now, we're going to assemble the electric skateboard in seven steps. Step one, mounting the motor. We're gonna be mounting the motor and pulley onto the trucks of the skateboard. First of all, we're going to unscrew the wheel and place the mount on. You can see the smaller 16 tooth gear has been already inserted onto the motor shaft and it's been locked into position. This also comes with some screws to lock the motor into the correct position. It's good to mount the skateboard closer to the deck rather than the ground to give it some clearance. You can choose to adjust the position of the motor, the pulley and the shaft with the supporting screws. The motor position can also be adjusted to make sure that the belt is tight enough. And now we're adding the timing belt to the motor. The inner tooth of the belt will grip onto the smaller gear, helping the wheel rotate. The larger gear would be screwed onto the 80mm orangutan wheels. Now this comes with a plastic hub space and this is already designed for a pulley system, which is cool. And it's essential to know your wheel size because some mounts and gears are only compatible with specific wheel sizes. It's important to have the large gear aligned with the wheel so it allows for a more smoother ride. The wheel can now be added back to the board and the belt adjusted to the wheel. And now we can just screw it back in place. And now we've completed the mounting of the motor and the pulley system to the skateboard truck. We can also rotate the wheel to see the motor also turn. It's also good to have the timing belt not too tight and not too loose. Step two, creating the enclosure. Now the enclosure found was a standard one you can get online. 
but you can use a strong plastic container which can work just as good. I added some window seal tape to provide some level of protection from the outdoors. Now this part is optional but adding a battery indicator across the input of your vest lets you know how much charge you got. This was stuck using hot glue gun. The goal here is to make it as watertight as possible. Step 3. Now add in the batteries. This involved two LiPo batteries of 5000mAh in series using an XT60 connection. We're going to place this in the container. We're also going to be using XT60 series connectors. This provides a combined voltage of 37 volts from the two 18.5 volt batteries. Now I'm just going to flip it over to make the layout a bit more cleaner. Another connector will also be put in series with the battery. This is what will complete the circuit with the loop key. This is another view of the setup. As mentioned, the loop key is the physical key to complete the circuit connection and start up the electric skateboard. This can be done by soldering the 12 AWG cable to both ends of the female XT90S connector. This works as an anti-spark solution as well. And I find it good to know that the board isn't physically connected when I'm not around. Step 5. Connecting the motor. So what we're going to do is thread the VESC and plug the three phase wires directly connected to the VESC. For now you can connect it to any wire but it may be that it may run backwards and if that's the case you can just switch the wires until it runs the correct orientation. And finally we're going to connect the battery status indicator to the VESC. Typically ESCs come with a remote and receiver but the VESC doesn't. It's slightly more on the expensive side, but a good quality ESC is definitely worth the investment. Step 6. Connecting the vest to the battery. Now, this part is pretty simple. We need to complete the circuit. The VESC would now regulate the motor so that the correct amount of power to the motor is provided from the battery. Now connecting the loop key, we can see that everything turns on. Clean up. Now using a hot glue gun, this is to keep everything in place and using some braided sleeves and electrical tape, we're just going to clean it all up. And now we've completed the setup, let's move into some programming. Arduino programming. This little thing is responsible for controlling the LED lights. It's an Arduino Nano, a microprocessor which is used to control the LEDs. Here's a scale of how small it is compared to an Uno and here's a pound coin. This makes it great for saving space. Now what we're going to be using is the 5 volt, the ground and pin 6 for the digital output. And we're going to be pairing it with the LED strip RGB WS. Yeah. We're going to be using some jumper wires, using male to female jumper wires to be specific. We're going to be matching the red, which is the 5 volt, the green to the digital 6 and the white to ground. They've already been color coded.
and these jumper wires are just going to be connected to the Arduino Nano. First one being digital 6. This specific pin is what's going to control the LED. Next one to ground. And lastly to 5 volts. And that's the connection already. Now we can get to doing some programming. We're going to be using a USB cable, the mini USB B. This is what's going to be used for the Arduino Nano. So plug in into our computer and into our Nano. Let's get ready for some programming. First thing we're going to do is go to the Arduino site and download their Arduino IDE. Now we're going to extract it. And you'll see a blank sketch once you open the program. You can also check that your Nano is connected by heading on to Tools and the Port and you'll see a USB serial. Now we're going to go into the Manage Libraries and download the NeoPixel library. This is going to be the Adafruit NeoPixel, which is already installed in my case, but you can install it for yours. And by going to Files and Examples, we'll be able to see the library. We're going to use the Strand Test example. Now you'll see that the LED is already at pin 6 and then we're using the first 60 LED strips in this example. So these are the ones that will be programmed. The first 60 strips is more than enough to go around my board in this case. We're now going to compile the sketch to make sure there's no errors and just checking that it's already connected, we're going to upload the code. And there you have it, the first 60 LED strips are programmed by our little nano microprocessor. Now the good thing about this is this LEDs are totally programmable so you can choose any RGB hue. So just cutting off what you need, we're going to put this around the skateboard. This was glued together with a hot glue gun. The cool thing about this is it's totally programmable. So if multiple colors is not your style, you can program it just for headlights and backlights. And with a little bit of electronics, this can be implemented onto the breadboard using the VES 5 volts and ground to power the Arduino Nano and the LED strips. Now a really cool idea is adding some push buttons. Now the idea here is based on the pressure you apply on the board, you'll be able to activate the right and left indicators. And now it's time to configure the VESC. Configuring the VESC. We're going to be using a 2.4 GHz RC remote and receiver, but you can use any other. Now coming out the VESC, we have some server wires. These wires will be connected to channel 2 of the receiver, with a black lead to the far left. It will look something like this. The next part will be configuring the VESC through the BLDC tool on your PC. What we're going to do is plug one end into the VESC and one end into the PC. The setup will look something like this. Now we're connected to our PC, we're going to head off to the VEST project site to download the VEST BLDC tool. Now the VEST tool is pretty good because it's open source, so there's a lot of contribution. We're going to head off to the GitHub and download the software. 
Now you're going to find different platforms and operating systems. We're going to download the Mac OS version. Once extracted, we're just going to open it up. And we're going to complete the setup. Now we're going to power our vest. And by pressing auto connect, on the bottom right you'll see it's connected. Now configuring the motor, we're going to hit setup and go for a medium motor. This will give us different parameters. The battery we're using is a 5000 milliamp battery and you can see this on the site. So we're going to just change this to 5 cells and 5000 milliamps. Now the gear ratio here is relatively accurate to mine, so I'm going to click run detection. You'll hear some noise and the motor will start running. What's happening right now is the VESC is detecting the motor and you'll see the fine tuned parameters here. Now we have the option to forward and reverse our motors. This is good to find the correct orientation, you don't want to skate backwards. You also have the option to invert, but for mine it's alright so we're going to click finish. Now we're going to set up the remote. Now by clicking setup input, we're just going to follow the wizard. We're going to use PPM remote. Now we can see it map onto the vest tool, but it's not giving us the full power. We can click apply, and now we've got the full power and the full brake force. Once that's done, we can just click next. We're not gonna do much here, but it's a good idea to look into this because there's so many options in the best tool that you can use. Now we're gonna do a little test. The throttle's working. And we can brake. Now we're going to clean up. I use this foam pad to provide some level of cushion. Now with the drilled holes earlier, we're going to put some M4 screws in to secure the enclosure. It's good to make sure it's really tight and if you want extra security, you can hot glue it together. And there you have it, the final version of the DIY electric skateboard with its remote. The lights are also fully programmable so you can customize to any color. So the big question is, how does a DIY board compare with a commercial board you can just buy? Well, we're gonna be using the Booster V2 for comparison. And the results. The weight of the board came in at 6.1 kilos. Here's the before and after which was an extra 2.5 kilos extra. The range also lasted for a good 10 miles before the program cut off voltage of the vest kicked in. And that was powerful enough for me to travel around London with my equipment. Now, the speed was calculated for a good 25 miles per hour, but that's more than enough for me really. And if you're going beyond that, that's, that's something else. This is my personal record. Lastly, the side-by-side -side comparison. Long story short, they're both pros and cons, it's more of a preference thing. But in short, a commercial board like a Boost is great for anyone who just wants to buy a board with warranty and customer support. 
but a DIY board can be cheaper and it's a fun build to do. But of course, you'll have to do your own maintenance and research. Now the next steps for this project will be adding a charging port so we can charge from the outlet. But for now, we'll just use a LiPo charger. Hey, you made it to the end or you skipped ahead. Either way, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to see some more skateboard footage or the most recent projects or even ask questions, hop over to our Instagram channel here at Smart Builds. I'm Evan, thanks for watching, peace. Also, I had to add this, but I would like to say thank you so much for helping us hit 18K subscribers because that's that's just a ridiculous number. It was only a few months ago where I was just like, let's hit 100 subscribers. So yeah, I would like to say thank you and let's see where we can take this.